Hey everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Thanks for joining me. Welcome to another Orchid Chat. First thing before we get started, just want to update you on Fred Clark R. Desert Davison. Those flowers are... I don't think that that's totally open yet, but um, they're looking pretty black. So I'm going to leave it alone until it's fully bloomed out. But isn't that exciting? First bloom seedling and look at what, look what it did. I am, I am hoping to take that into judging on January 9th and I would really expect it to get something, I gotta be honest. But we'll see, you never know. Alright, let's start out by looking at Mormodia Jumbo World. So. I asked my Instagram people, what color is this orchid? What color are these flowers? And I got some really great responses. So, uh, for example, I got neon mustard. Okay, pretty interesting. I got apple golden delicious. Making me hungry here. Got pistachio tiramisu. Yes, please. I actually looked that up, and the pictures of that looks delicious. It's actually a thing. Yum. And then my personal favorite, lemon lime margarita. <laughs> that is great. It's like I'm on vacation. Uh, uh, I also had a good one, lemon lime sorbet. But I like the margarita, too. So I wanted to just kind of ask you guys, every year when I post pictures of this thing, it gets, it gets tons of likes. Like basically on my Instagram, if anything gets over 200 likes, it's a hit. This thing got over 200 likes in less than 24 hours. And I'm just curious, what is it about this plant? If you like it, if you like this flower, what is it about it? Is it the color? Is it the, the speckles on the flowers? Is it the way that it kind of cascades down? What What is it exactly that you like about this flower? Just think it's interesting. Just in contrast, you know, in contrast, the Dendrobium Country Girl got about 120 likes, so not as popular. I'm not sure why. I like it because it's it does have a nice fragrance. It's I wish it was stronger. I just to me, it's just an unusual color. You just don't see things that are quite that color. Um, and actually, that's the reason that this plant was given to me a few years ago, um, was because the person, they didn't like the color. So, I'm glad they did. I really like it. Uh, and also, talking about names. Um, so, if Desert Davison does get an award, I'm already thinking ahead about, you know, what, would I, what name would I give it? Because you have to register it with a name. And I was thinking, okay, darkness... You know, what would be a cool, like, name having to do with darkness? And so I looked at some different, like, my only other awarded plant is this one. This is my um, half-prime child, Apollo. And I figured, okay, well, it sounds like I'm going with a mythology theme. So here, so um, I have tentatively chosen the name Osiris for this clone, if it's awarded. Why? Osiris is the god of the underworld in ancient Egypt. He is wrapped like a mummy. Oh, look at those bulbs. They're also wrapped. Isn't that kind of cool? And he is also the, the god of agriculture, renewal, rebirth. So it's kind of a, it's kind of, he's like a god of the underworld, but it's kind of a, with a positive, a positive thing. So he's not, uh, there was another god, uh, there was a, a Greek god, Erebus, which is the god of darkness. Uh, and then there was another uh, Egyptian god of darkness. I think, I don't remember, it was Apop, I think it was. It was a, he's a snake god, and he's like evil and dark. I wanted to stay away from the evil. Or Osiris seemed like a good fit. So, that's going to be the tentative name. If, if this plant gets awarded on January 9th, you're going to be looking at Fred Clark R. Desert Davison, Osiris. FCC AOS. Alright, uh, so 
as you guys know, the seasons are changing. We moved into winter last week, and the position of the sun is changing in the tent. Um, the air, I've shown you before, the air blows straight down from this fan and is kind of dispersed a little bit by my little fan disperser Coke bottle thing. And uh, I'm gonna do some rearranging. Right now, plants are right under the fan that don't really need to be under the fan. The paths, the bobo films, these plants can stay a little bit wetter. I learned from coming back a couple days ago that there are some cattleyas in here that aren't drying out fast enough. And so I'm gonna need to rearrange the whole tent so that the plants that need to dry out quickly or that are in a potting medium or in a situation where they don't dry out as quickly that but need to are going to get put right under the fan and then we'll kind of put everything out generally speaking this side of the tent gets more light the sun is actually going to be poking through here in a minute and then on this side of the tent a little bit less light less they don't get sun they don't get as much sun so we're going to be doing some arrangement i'm going to take everything out Probably do some cleaning as well. The floor is filthy. Um, Rehang the lights in a different fashion. I said I was going to change them this way. And uh, I still haven't ordered the parts for the automatic watering system. I'm kind of putting it off because I'm not. I just. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, and I and I'm I'm kind of stuck. I'm kind of stuck. I need to talk to somebody who already has this uh, Mist King system. So that I understand one thing that I'm missing, piece of information I'm missing is if, okay, let's say there's a mist head here. How, what is the radius of the cone of mist that comes down from it? I need to know that so that I can decide how many I need or how high to hang them. So, still working on that, kind of dragging my feet. I need to get on it. I'm going to be in this apartment at least until September. So, seems like it'd be worth it to get it all set up, even if for some reason I have to move in September. Okay, and the last thing, oh no, not last thing, second to last thing, very important. Uh, if you are interested in a flask of Cattleya Rex from my plants, last year I crossed two and germination has been very successful. I am going to put a link at the bottom of this video for you to click on. It's going to take you to Troy Myers Conservatory where they do seed flasking and they are going to have they're they're estimating about 15 flasks available with about 16 plants minimum per flask. If you would like to get on that, you need to go there right now and reserve one. I don't know if it costs anything to make a reservation, but it might. The flasks are going to be $43.75 a piece. I'm not sure if that includes shipping. It might not. But also keep in mind that they are still possibly two years away from being shipped. We're, you're just basically making a reservation. Things could change. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to be honest, um the Myers Conservatory website, they are not super good at getting back to people quickly. So I'm just going to put that out there. They are taking reservations after my conversation with you guys um about do I buy all the flasks? Do I make them public whatever? I decided, you know, based on your responses and based on just my own thoughts and my own goals, I just decided to open it up completely. I'm going to let them make as many flasks as that they as they can and sell them all. And I'm hoping that you guys, you guys are the first to know. I haven't told anybody on Instagram. I haven't told anybody anywhere else. Uh, you guys are the first. If you're watching this right now, you're the first to hear this news. So if you want a flask, uh, you need to go reserve one because they will sell out very, very quickly. Feel free to tell your friends. All right. And the last thing, well, second to last thing, I was on um, the Slipper Talk Orchid forums, and I like that forum. People in there are pretty serious. Um, sometimes they're a little bit, you know, a little snooty, but that's okay. I'm snooty too, so 
it's fine. Um, but recently I've been noticing just a trend, and I, I feel like white cat layouts are becoming more and more talked about, common, popular. I don't know. I just, um, I luckily, I bought out um, part of this uh, person's collection last year when I got the uh, Cattleya Maxima, Cerulea, and the this plant. This is uh, Cattleya Jose Marti, which is a, it's a classic white Cattleya. It was, um, it was registered in the 1950s, I think, and its parents are Bob Betts by Bo Bells, and the whole world of white Cattleyas, there's a world of white Cattleyas. There are breeders that collect only white Cattleyas. There is a video on YouTube, I'm going to link it above here. It is a talk by uh, someone who collects Cattleyas, very, very rare, exceptional Cattleyas, all about white Cattleyas, the history of white Cattleyas, um, and it is fascinating. It's, it's long, about an hour long. It's it's worth it if you got an hour just to lay lay down and listen. It's it's a great it's a great uh, presentation and and it just opened my eyes to this whole world like exclusive world of incredibly rare plants. Like for example, Bowbells, one of the parents of this plant, it's received like fifty at least fifty awards from the AOS. I think I, I don't know. I'm making this number up, but it's a lot. Bob Betts as well has won dozens of awards from the AOS and Bob Betts is actually Bowbells by Mossy Eye, I think. So it's 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 the the world of white Cattleyas is pretty pretty amazing. And and there's so much intrigue and 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 history. Like the par the original parents of Bowbells, uh Bowbells is uh Suzanne High by Edith C Edith C. I. And that original Suzanne High, apparently it had incredible traits, and the owner of that plant in Britain uh, actually sent the plant by ship to America during World War II to protect it, so it didn't get bombed, and the ship got torpedoed by German U-boat submarines, and it sank. So the original parent of Catlia Bobels is at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Is that crazy? So there's all this st story about white Cattleyas and all this kind of stuff. And all these white Cattleyas that you see today descend from this one Bowbells plant. Or this, this uh, it was a, it was a, it was, it was like a generation of, you know, when you make a seed pod, you get a whole bunch of different clones of Bowbells. But that original Bowbells from the 19, I don't know, 20s or 30s. Anyway, so fascinating. Check that out if you got time. I'm thrilled to have a classic white Cattleya, and maybe one day it will actually bloom instead of putting out new growths. But who, who knows? As you can tell, it is a very vigorous plant. It is rooting like crazy. It might even crawl out of the pot before the damn thing blooms. Which would be funny, kind of, but also annoying because... When this thing has to come out of this pot, I'm going to be tearing up a lot of roots, unfortunately. Anyway, Jose Marti, classic white Cattleyas. Okay, and the very last thing I wanted to mention is that on Monday, I'm going to be interviewing um, the, cur the orchid curator, orchid collection curator of the Huntington Botanical Gardens. His name is Brandon Tam. Uh, assuming everything works out, we're going to be doing this interview on Monday. And I will post that for you guys to see. My purpose in interviewing him is I want to know about the job of being an orchid collection curator. First of all, how many jobs like that are even out there? Is this, a, is this an exceptionally rare job? Um, you know, does every botanical garden have an orchid collection curator? What does it take to get that job? What What is it? I mean, I don't know. Just tons of questions about that job what's the, what's a what's a day in the life of an orchid curator like right so um if you have any thoughts or questions that you'd like me to pop into that interview for brandon please please let me know i would be happy to at least consider those i want to i don't want to bombard him with too many questions but um and he, he's very he seems very willing to to chat about it and i'm super excited to be able to share it with you so really looking forward to that 
And we're just at about 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop talking. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope today's chat was interesting to you. I know there's a lot of stuff here today. So I will definitely update you as Desert Davison continues to open. Very, very excited about this black orchid. You know, at first I was like, oh man, it's one of those black orchids. They're so gimmicky. It's so, it's such a, you know, whatever. It's it's just like a sales pitch. I don't even know. It, it, it doesn't, it's not, you've never seen anything like this in nature, right? This is very hybridized. This is very man-made. So I was like, meh. But, you know, I think I'm eating my words a little bit because the, the, the plant itself has really, it's, it, 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 I'm impressed. I am impressed. And if it's fragrant, I don't know if it's going to be fragrant yet. Hopefully we're going to get some fragrance in the next few days. If it's fragrant on top of it, on top of this display, I'm really going to just shut, shut my mouth. Because that, you just can't deny. That's pretty, pretty special. Pretty cool. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm William Green. These are my green pets, and I will see you soon. Happy growing.